Okay, everybody, we are beginning. <laughs> My name is Nritzi Sanchez, and I'm here to introduce Gurav, who will be speaking about accessibility and the free desktop. Gurav, take it away. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> I hope you can read that. It's pretty big. Okay, so uh, let me just wait for the signal from the streaming guys. Uh, okay, so uh, I'll be speaking on accessibility and the free desktop. Uh, a couple of things about me. My name is Gaurav Parikh. Uh, I am from Jaipur, India, also known as the Pink City. Uh, it's a pretty famous tourist destination if you ever happen to visit. I, I am primarily a WordPress developer. I do web-related things. Uh, I am a free software advocate. I started using free software uh, exclusively in 2000. I probably the late 2007 or early 2008. Uh, I've been I've been working with local organizations, you know, companies, and different people, you know, uh, trying to convert people to free software. Uh, different distributions, Fedora, Ubuntu, Red Hat, whatnot. I've tried everything, and I've tried converting people to every one of them. So. Uh, pretty much a native. I currently work as a happiness engineer at Auto Automatic. Most of you might know uh, Automatic from WordPress.com, which is kind of, which is supposedly a big thing in the web services market. Uh, I'm working on accessibility awareness since 2011. Uh, I have worked with a number of local organizations, uh, trying to move them from proprietary accessibility products like those from Freedom Scientific or Nuance and uh, similar companies to free software solutions like the GNOME desktop uh, and uh, you know uh, on different uh, on dif uh, for different uh, types of disabilities there are like different uh, accessibility projects which we will talk about in some time. Okay, so this is a link you might want to note down if you know uh, if you want to know more. There's a uh, link to these slides on this page. There will be more uh, material after the talk is over, maybe a couple of pictures or blog posts or something like that. So if you want to note this down, this link has, uh, this page has a link to these slides and other slides and it will have more information after the talk is over. So I hope you have noted down this if you're interested. Okay, so Let's talk about disability. What exactly is disability? What are the challenges? Uh, uh, I thought that I would, you know, say difficult words and throw some terminology at you. But, uh, you know, when I was attending the keynote, uh, there was a thing that computing should be accessible to everyone. And I thought of, you know, something. Uh, which I am going to demonstrate to you. Screen reader on. No okay. Wikipedia. I would like all of you to close your eyes for frame. like 30 seconds. And uh, imagine that uh, all of your computing is done with this voice in your head. Oh. Uh, Bye. Backspace. Backspace. Bye. No, no, Wikipedia, the free encyclopedia, Mozilla Firefox frame. No heading level one. Back I one design link. Back I one point one Q I one point two I one point three I one point four I two applications link. Left alt screen reader off. Okay, I suppose I have made my point clear. As you can see. Uh, or rather not see that, uh, you know, accessing information this way is extremely slow, extremely difficult. Uh, now imagine someone who has been living like this, you know, uh, 
without being able to see anything for you know n amount of years maybe it's a kid who never knew how, uh, what exactly light is or what vision is maybe it's a child who uh, has a muscular disability and who cannot use a regular keyboard or a mouse like we can do uh, we take all these things for granted uh, all the while there are millions of people in the world who can tell you otherwise okay so i have some uh, statistics here just in the asian pacific around 650 million people uh, have a disability of some kind now these disabilities range from anything from uh, visual impairment to blindness to muscular dystrophy uh, some people don't like it like calling it that but mental retardation it's not a politically correct word but it's still something that people understand uh, cerebral palsy and you know there are a lot of other i think legally i can tell you about 18 different categories of disabilities are there and uh, these 690 650 million people in just the asian pacific uh suffer from some kind of disability uh i have some statistics on visual impairment which seems to be one of the major challenges when it comes to accessibility uh so uh, around 40 million people uh, in the world are blind that is completely blind uh, they cannot tell that there is light in front of their eyes even if you know there is a bright light uh out of these 40 million people around 15 million people are in india itself the country where i come from uh, so in a country of 1.3 billion people around 15 million people are completely blind now these people range from you know infants to old people uh so the challenge the challenge we actually face is uh, a lot of these people like a majority of these people come from backgrounds uh, which are uh, socially and economically uh, backward so a lot of these are poor people people from places uh, where there is no access to uh, basic services where education for disabled people is uh, you know not seen as something believable i can tell you from personal experience that people still don't believe that people who are blind can study and you know pass college degrees but i can but i can tell you uh, my father is 63 years old and uh, when he was 1 and 1/2 year old he lost his eyesight and he still uh, completed his masters and went on to become a you know high ranking officer in the government for 36 years so uh, i don't believe people when they think that you know people who are born with a disability or who acquire a disability don't deserve a chance uh okay so what is the solution the solution is simple you know if you think about it uh internet is you know it's a blessing some people think otherwise but uh internet is something that uh that can take someone and uh, take someone from a very bad situation and redeem them in ways they can't imagine they couldn't have imagined and i suppose that internet is something uh you know i'm not able to express it in words but i i but, but i hope since all of you are from a free software community you must understand that internet is something even if you're not from a privileged background internet is something that will take you places a number of people here are from different places you know and they are here because they are connected to other like minded people through the internet and internet is such a resource that even if you are from a remote place in africa or a or a you know an extremely rural place a, a small village in any part of india or bangladesh or any other south asian country even any african place you know you understand what i'm saying 
any place which doesn't have access to anything if you get internet there you can you can bring out skills in people that you uh, couldn't imagine were possible and uh, imagine if this uh, gift of internet was to be given to people who didn't think that anything was possible with their lives uh, so this is my solution to you know every problem that anyone with any kind of disability faces because knowledge is something that will lift you uh, doesn't matter where you are okay so we've been talking about accessibility so what exactly is accessibility so the first point uh, that people understand is uh, accessibility is the state of being able to be accessed by anyone irrespective of uh, their situation their abilities or disabilities or you know their situations in general then accessibility is also the technological means to reach such a state so we you know we as people in software uh, any time we talk about accessibility you know accessibility toolkit atk or ca speech dispatcher e speak you know i could throw a lot of technical words but uh usually they are they all come under this particular point next is the socio economic framework to reach such a state now this is one major concern that you know people tend to forget when talking about accessibility uh so this is very important especially in parts of the world where you know reach of internet is not there or you know computers are expensive for example if you buy a 1000 dollar computer in usa the same computer will cost you 1600 dollars in you know the third world if i might say so uh, cu uh, coupled with the exchange rates and stuff like that it actually makes it a lot more difficult to acquire technology to uh, to bring people out of their uh, limitations especially in countries or especially in places which are not considered the first world or the developed nations or places like that okay so as i was talking about the socio economic framework to reach a state of accessibility so this is the major failure that we uh, face when talking about technology uh, helping people come out of you know problematic situations or situations in general uh so i was actually looking for a device called a braille embosser a couple of weeks ago and the cheapest braille uh, okay braille embosser is a device that you know uh, people with visual impairments can use to read stuff it's a little device which dots that come up if you're not familiar with braille just do a search and you'll see it's a it's a script that you know uh, you can use to read stuff by feeling from your hands it, it has a pattern of dots so just do a quick search if you're not familiar with braille so a braille embosser is a device which does this dynamically so it's like a usb device you connect it to your computer and all the text you can read it uh, by touching it with your hands and the cheapest braille embosser i could find was somewhere uh, i don't remember the exact price but it was more than a thousand dollars so it's like a device which is this big 10 inches or so and it costs a thousand dollars and you know the reason people aren't able to make cheaper devices with such capabilities is because corporations don't want them want them to uh it's a huge market people earn a lot of money and uh, since it's a, it's a necessity for some people you know the market hasn't come to a, a state uh where you could buy a cheap or an affordable device like that a uh, similar devices like similar devices exist for example a hardware speech engine they cost a ton even software based solutions like products from freedom scientific there is a screen reader called jaws which costs 1200 dollars for for example 1200 dollars is you know is a reasonable amount of money for example in europe or us but it's uh, it's a huge amount of money in a country where you know for example 
uh one us dollar is equivalent to uh, around 67 indian rupees so 1200 usd is a lot of money and you could buy 10 computers in that price if you buy them locally you could probably build 10 computers in that price uh so this is where we have failed uh if if i divide people into two categories like people who are privileged pe people who are born with all their organs intact we have 10 fingers so we can use the keyboard but for example uh, a kid with cerebral palsy that that kid cannot move his or her fingers properly they can't use the keyboard so uh, for example a kid who cannot see and if the only uh, access to computers is through a software that costs 1200 dollars then we have failed them we as uh, people who are able bodied or uh, you know living in privilege we take these things for granted but if we can't provide means for people who are less abled to access the vast gift vast vast amount of knowledge and information that the gift of internet gives us then we have failed these people uh, okay it's not going to the next slide i don't know why okay so how does free software help uh you know people who let's say are from not so privileged situations so free software is easily accessible when i say accessible uh, you can probably you know if you want uh, ubuntu you don't have to go to a store and purchase it you know you can download it let's say you have one uh, you know slow internet connection in a remote place you could probably wait 10 days but you can download and use ubuntu or fedora or red hat or suze or you know any kind of free software project it's not limited to operating systems but it is still easily accessible yes low cost if you want to use for example a gnu linux distribution the only expense uh, would be the computer and probably you know the bandwidth consumed or maybe you know a volunteer who can get you a cd or you can write to one of the companies they can send you a free cd or something like that so the cost is a great advantage uh, as i talked about the expensive software uh, possibility of improvement by community you're all familiar with this this is why we are here so i won't explain this point very much but let's say your screen reader doesn't support your language you know you can just gather 15 students from the local university work on it for a year and you have support for a new language you want a new language from the company you pay them like they'll say pay pay us fifteen thousand dollars or fifty thousand dollars or something like that maybe we'll add support for your language in the next to next version and you still don't know if it will happen educational avenues like you want to add new features just gather 10 students and work with them on it for a year it'll make a great project uh, the students will learn a lot maybe they'll get extremely awesome jobs because they've worked on a free software project <laughs> independence from large foreign corporations now i am kind of a skeptic when it comes to trusting large foreign corporations although i am using a dell computer but you know i can say stuff so i don't trust large foreign corporations for some people these are large domestic corporations but the point still remains the same these are large corporations driven by only one interest that is money and uh, you know when you talk about doing good for the society you can't trust corporations who are driven by money okay so this point is actually very important easy to fund and support for governments of underdeveloped economies now i i have recently added this point i actually added this point after i finished up the uh, finished up making the presentation that is why the margins are all off so i actually applied to get a couple of you know government issued software a couple of months ago and uh, like three or four days before leaving for germany i received four cds in mail 
So these CDs actually contained uh, software in local languages for four. I, I applied for uh, software in four different languages. So all of these CDs had uh, translated versions of, say, LibreOffice, Ubuntu, Thunderbird, Firefox, Iceweasel, even. You know, copies of them for Windows and uh, for GNU Linux distributions. Although they were using the the tar files. You can just extract and run. It's not ideal, but it's still. And they had language files for the festival uh, screen reader. So India is not a developed country. It's kind of under development. It's a developing country, I would say. But uh, due to currency differences and things like that, it is still very expensive for the government to procure software from you know let's say american or european corporations so they decided to develop their own uh, stuff and uh, there's a there's an organization called cdac uh, which actually did all the development work uh, i don't have the cds with me right now because otherwise i would have to bring a cd player as well my laptop doesn't have a dvd drive so i cannot show them to you but uh, the link to the page I shared, I, I will put links to the information on that page. So you'll probably be able to see it afterwards. Sorry? CDAC. Yeah, it's an abbreviation. So CDAC, Center for Development of Advanced Computing. Okay, so what currently do we have? I, I suppose we are running out of time. So I'll quickly go through this. Screen readers and TTS engines for the visually impaired. I did give a couple of seconds of demo for this. You heard the robotic voice. It's not there yet. It's, you know, it's hard to understand if you're just starting out. But if you don't have anything, you know, some, if, you, if you get something, it's good enough for now. There are better quality screen readers in the free software world, but they don't have support for uh, a lot of regional languages and stuff. The voice that you heard was from eSpeak, which is the default uh, speech synthesizer for uh, GNOME Orca project, which is the default screen reader for uh, GNOME. Uh, although, I've been, although I am not running uh, the default GNOME desktop, I run elementary OS, but it works on all GNOME stack based uh, software. So it's, it's good enough if you just want to get started. There is Festival, which is better quality, but it's not as integrated, so you have to do some work to do that. Uh, easier navigation and input methods for the motor impaired. Motor impairment is also a big uh, problem. So we have a couple of projects. The most notable, I would say, is Dasher. Dasher is an input method. Uh, you can just do a quick search if you don't know what Dasher is. It's an input method that you can use with, you know, let's say you, you, let's say you're able to use only one finger on one hand. You can use Dasher to actually write like 15, 20 words per minute with Dasher without using a keyboard or anything. So Dasher is pretty cool as a text input. It's available for Android as well, you know, as a replacement keyboard, and it works on GTK and Qt and other applications using different toolkits. Uh, I actually don't know of a lot of other projects. We have uh, uh, we have like accessibility related settings in m almost all desktop environments. You have high contrast themes. You have uh, color correction in some places. For example, uh, Android recently got a uh, you know feature for uh, I think color blindness. You can switch colors for you know. Uh, I don't think we have anything like that on free software desktops yet, but if anyone wants to work on that, they're <laughs> more than welcome. <laughs> okay. Uh, since we are out of time, I won't go into examples. We already had like a quick demo. If you have any questions, you know, do we have any time for questions? <clears throat> okay, so. so unfortunately, we've run out of time, but if you have any questions, please, uh, uh, I guess, email or yeah. uh, contact him. Uh, yeah, so there's the link, there's my GitHub, there's my Twitter, my Google+, and I'm here for like, three more days, so offline questions are always welcome. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for presenting. We really appreciate it. Let's give a round of applause. Thank you for having me.